part three of the six arc 87 and 75 grain V max testing. Today we're going to be putting them through some gel blocks. First step, we're going to be doing the 75 grain V max, which is doing about 3,010 feet per second. So, first step is a 75 grainer. Hopefully, I got to trigger the high speed camera down there. My Sony, hopefully, I can hit this thing and shoot all this. All in one here. Hopefully I got that. So the first one, we did not get the high speed footage from it. Hopefully you can see in there. That bullet stopped right in there. But that expansion on that is pretty tall on there. That's looking pretty good. It dumped all of its energy all the way. I was wondering if it'd get into the second gel block, but it did not. It's sitting mushroomed what's left of it right there. And it don't look like there's much left of it. We'll have to dig that out, weigh it, see how much is left from that original 75 grains. You can see all the, all the little bits in there. It trapped them out real well. Only took probably, I don't know, probably half inch in there to start just rapid expansion now let's do the 87 grainer which is doing about uh, 2760 feet per second see what it does so the 87 grain v max hopefully on this one we'll get the high speed to kick in hopefully this remote will reach that far it did it earlier i needed to do it again Hopefully I did it. Well, let's get in here and look at this. I think it definitely hit a little harder. So again, super rapid expansion. Only half inch in or so. Went all the way through the block that time. And that one mushroomed out. What's left of it? Right there. So definitely carry a little bit further, but not, not very much. Probably break out the tape measure here. About 12 inches, 12 and a half inches worth of expand or worth of penetration there. Definitely, you know, four and a half inches worth of expansion. All them bits and pedals, just everywhere. Definitely wreck a coyote. Well, that didn't work out as planned. <laughs> uh, electronics are gonna fail you. It's uh, about 86, 87 degrees out here, pretty humid. And uh, we're trying to shoot this from 75 yards. And the first time when I was testing the camera, the, the high frame rate worked on the remote from here. But then we go to shoot the gel blocks, and of course, you got nothing. I mean, electronics are going to fail you. So instead of getting 960 frames per second, we only got 240 on a GoPro. But 
let's pack this thing up. We'll go inside where it's cooler. We'll take a look at them gel blocks again. Back here in the basement. Let's go ahead and measure this again. Yeah, it was looking about like 12 inches. That bottom one, I mean, this might have been just a little bit taller. You got about four and three quarter to that back one in there, but that bottom bit of permanent cavitation runs all the way down out of the bottom of the block. So that might have been even taller on this 87 grainer. Never mind that one over there. I tried taking a second shot with an 87. I, I made a backup one and um, <laughs> see if I could get it under the super slow-mo, but it didn't pan out. But your main part here from here to here is about eight inches and really I mean you got pretty much it's done expanding around nine and a half and it initiated only a half inch in Let me flip that around there we go but yeah I mean within a half inch so on an animal I mean this doesn't have something to simulate you know rib bone out here or anything like that so those things come apart just immediately upon contacting any type of material. So here is the look at the block from the entrance. See how wide that kind of kind of went, but four inches wide on the permanent cavitation in there. It's looking pretty good. Really just spider webs out all over. I'm going to go ahead and try to dig this, or should I say what's left of this 87 grainer out of there. There we go. Wow, yeah, that really folded back. Take a look at that thing. Really just flattened out. That's quite the expansion on there. Let's go ahead and throw a caliper on there. And that opened up. That's a little over a half inch on there. Probably its widest point. Narrower point here. I get this. Yeah, just a little under a half inch. Okay, let's set this in the scale here. See what we got left. 35.4 grains. Here is the 75 grain V Max. See that bullet came to rest just past nine inches right there that bullet sure doesn't look very big in there it really lost a lot of mass back in here but again you can see that i mean most of that gets dumped inside hole seven to seven and a half inches and then height wise about four oh four four and a half somewhere in there so pretty close to the same width. There's the end grain of it. Again, just right there's where it initially went in. About four inches wide or so. Take the camera off the mount here a second. I'll give you a little better look here. Really star bursts out on that. All right, let's dig that bullet out of there. Let's, let's dig this bullet out of here. I guess here is probably the closest direction get to it. Get the 
little needle nose in there. Oh yeah, that really pancaked. Oh, in fact, that just fell apart. The lead there just came off the, basically the base of the jacket right there. And then you got that tiny little bit of lead. So let's take a little measurement on here. Point three seven six or so out direction. About point four four five that direction of the jacket anyway, the lead. Lead's gonna be a little tougher. Point three five one. But that's what's left out of that much bullet. That's, that's all that's left is just that little bit right there. We'll go ahead and throw those two pieces in the, in the scale. Let's put our two pieces in there. Only about 21.7 grains left of that bullet down from 75. Another little comparison here, 87 grainer on the left, 75 grainer on the right, looking at it top down. That gel block's not quite as clear, but very, very similar results. Minus the penetration depth difference. Which one to choose? 87 grainer, 75 grainer. Uh, they both worked really well. Dumping all their energy in them first few inches, they're both going to kill bobcats, coyotes, raccoons, prairie dogs, whatever you shoot them at. Um, the 75 grainer though, I mean, it's going to have a little bit of an edge just because it's faster, a little over 3,000 feet per second versus, I think these were around 2760. Um, getting that flatter trajectory, getting out there to three, 400 yards with the speed is going to help you on that margin for error for distance and your wind calling ability, whether it be at night or during the day. So more than likely probably going to end up running 75s, but both of them are going to work. Pick your poison. If you like what you saw here today, please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.